good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are and what time of day it is when you watch this video. My name is Z, and welcome back to my gaming corner. In today's episode, we are going to venture into the molten core of Blackrock Mountain for our Tier 1 appearances. Because as I said in our Transmogrification 101 video, before you can transmog your gear to look like other stuff, you first have to obtain the other stuff. And there are appearances scattered all over this game. They could be random drops from rare mobs, random drops from normal mobs, raid loot, PvP loot, dungeon loot. You can get appearances from anywhere. And for this series, we're going to focus on the raids, and then we're going to focus on the dungeons. And I'm going to be showing you some adventures scattered throughout of other things that are completely unrelated to transmogrification, but not really because the quests and the adventures I'm going to show you will also have transmogrification rewards at the end of it. But today is the Molten Core, which is Tier 1. Now, there have been several changes to the Molten Core. If you remember, back in patch 7.2, which was Legion Fall, when Blizzard released the Tomb of Sargeras, and we got to go to the Broken Shore, remember that? They updated the models for Flame Elementals, Earth Elementals, Wind Elementals, and Ice Elementals, as well as the models for the Rock Giants, and also their little underlings, like the, the stone trolls and whatnot. And all the monsters inside Molten Core are flame elementals, earth elementals, and giant rock, rock giants, right? Well, ever since patch 7.2, they've had an update. And then Blizzard changed over to DirectX 12. That's most recently, and Molten Core looks better than ever. So this is different than the Molten Core that used to be on this channel where the Flame Elementals just look like blobs of glowy stuff. Now they actually look three-dimensional and have depth and when they are killed they have little sparkly particle effects and they look really cool when they die. So let's get down to brass tacks. If we go up here to my minimap, you'll see that I have a lovely little add-on called Atlas Loot. And there are a couple of add-ons that I would highly recommend if you're going to be serious about transmogrification. The first one is Atlas Loot. The other one is Mogget. And then Blizzard has basically made both of these a moot issue because if you go to Shift P, you have, like, this is where your mounts are and your pet journal is. You can also come over here to the Appearance tab. And you can look by item slot, whether it be helmet, shoulder, chest, cloak, bracers, gloves, belts, whatever. You can look through all the different appearances that are available for your class. If you have them, they're up at the top. If you don't have them, they'll be down here listed in gray. And these are stuff that you still need to get, and it'll even tell you where to get it, like this, this Lionheart helm. You can get it from blacksmithing, or if you press tab, then it's a world drop from somewhere, and you have to research where to, where to get that stuff. But it'll tell you where to get stuff. Atlas Loot tells you everything per expansion, and then if you click on a random expansion, it'll go through the dungeons at the top, the raids at the bottom. You can click on a raid, you can see all the bosses, and when you click on a boss, you can actually see the loot it drops, and you can even um, sort it by your class. There'll be a little class item down here. There's also a transmogrify item right here. And if you have that that selected, you see how Shadow Strike right there has a little bit of a green background behind it. When I turn that off, the background disappears. Look at that, see? Also on the Flamewalker leg plates, see how they're, they have the little transmog that goes green or red? If you don't have the appearance, it's listed in red. If you do have the appearance, it's listed in green. So you can do that, or you can click on the spec that you're in, and it will only show you the loot that is for your spec. So that's, that's one way you can, you can do it. And then you can look through, and you can see what all the bosses drop. The other way to do that is to come down here to the bottom right corner of your screen and click on the Adventure Guide. 
and then you have to go to raids and you click on molten core and you go to oh we need to oh I guess it doesn't want to show me any of the bosses see it shows me the bosses there and it shows me the bosses there okay there we go so now if you click on a boss you can actually see the loot and you can say all slots or you could say all classes and you can also see the loot here so Blizzard kind of made it a moot issue but with this you can also see a model of the boss you can see the loot that it drops you can see everything with Atlas loot it's just right here and you can see it all at a glance without having to scroll through different menus but you also can come down here with this pull down menu and click collections and then come down here to tier sets and for tier one this is what you can get so the druid set for tier one it's the raiment of scenarius it looks like that kind of cool right the hunter set is the giant stalker armor those shoulders look really cool for hunters the mage set is the arcanist set they look like that they get a cool little headpiece that is like a like a vampire neck back thing it's a big giant collar that goes up behind the back of their head kind of like you know how vampires are but not really a vampire okay the paladin set is the lawbringer set and this is what i was talking about like those banana shoulders but they're really swans look at that their neck is a swan you can see the beak right there there's wings of them they're actually swan shoulders but the paladin set is lawbringer looks like that the preset is the set of the pious or the repent i think it's it's either like holy pious or like repentance or something but this is the preset they have cool shoulders that are very front heavy and they have the the banners that are hanging down from the shoulders and the cool collar behind their head kind of cool the rogue set looks like this now if you make a class trial rogue you actually get the ambu scale set it's actually called ambu scale and it looks very similar to this the helmet is exactly the same the shoulders look a little better but everything else is pretty much the same it's red and gray and black it looks kind of cool the shaman set looks like this they get a cool mask kind of like a ninja a little bit they get these cool earth shattered shoulders they get robes now shamans and paladins and death knights in some cases sometimes they wear robes and sometimes they wear pants because the tier 2 paladin is a robe set the tier 1 paladin is pants and there are several sets that for the paladins the shamans there's even one for the hunters where it's a robe there's even some for monks that are sometimes robes and sometimes pants so you just got to look and see what you want to want to look like the warlock set looks like this big giant horns on the shoulders and it's very fell green and red and black very cool and then the warrior set is the set of might like the might plate set and you'll also know that there is an heirloom set for you plate wearing classes out there that is the burnished helm and burnished shoulders of might it looks just like this set but if you wanted to have the actual gloves and belt and boots that go with this set you have to be on a warrior because only warriors can add this to appearance because these are class items and you have to be of the appropriate class to add your class items to appearances so now that you've seen all of the tier one sets let me show you where it where tier one is it's inside black rock mountain and the quickest way to get to black rock mountain if you're an alliance character super easy because look we're here at the burning steps which is right here and if we click on stormwind you'll see the stormwind keep is right over here and right out beyond stormwind keep you will see black rock mountain let's get on our flying mount and just fly up a little bit and look you can see the little strands of that of westfall and if we were to fly right over here I would be able to see Stormwind Keep, like the roof of Stormwind Keep. You know, the sky is all red and the, the skybox is all, all weird. Let's see, if we just fly over in this general direction, which is southwest from Black Rock Mountain, we get over here far enough when you can start to see the, the land changes. You can look, there's Stormwind Keep 
right there. You can see it. There's the castle of Stormwind Keep. Stormwind City is just right over there. Blackrock Mountain's right there. So for you Alliance players, go to Stormwind, fly past Stormwind Keep, and bam, you're at Blackrock Mountain. For the Horde, you have two ways to get here. So let's go to Ogremar. Ogremar is over here on Kalimdor. So for the Horde, you can either take the Zeppelin to Gromgal Base Camp in Stranglethorn Vale, and that puts you right down here in Stranglethorn Vale at, at Gromgal Base Camp. But if you look at the, 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 the flight from Gromgal Base Camp up to here, you have to cross the northern part of Stranglethorn Vale, the Duskwood, part of Elwyn Forest, and then into the Burning Steps. The other way that you can get here from the Horde is back in Ogremar at the Western Earth Shrine, which is this location right here. It's on the northern bluff beyond the Zeppelin Towers. Take the portal to Twilight Highlands. And the Twilight Highlands are over here on the Eastern Kingdoms. In this zone right here, you actually appear right over here at Dragon Maw Port. And then from Dragon Maw Port, you can just fly over to this location. You can see it's it's sixes. You can take either either route, either take the Zeppelin to Gromgal Base Camp, or take the portal at the Western Earth Shrine to the Twilight Highlands and then fly over. For the Horde, we have to fly. For the Alliance, you can just go to Stormwind and you're basically here. So once you arrive at Blackrock Mountain, whether you go to Burning Steps or Searing Gorge, You fly into these big gates, and these big gates take you inside the mountain. If you come in from the other direction, from the north, from Searing Gorge, then you enter from this entrance over here. You'll actually come in over here through through this hallway. There's, a, there's another doorway out there to the north side. You can actually see it. Let me just fly right here. Ah... Where's the portcullis? Right there. See, there's a there's a hallway out to Searing Gorge over on that side. You come in, and you reach this chamber. And you're looking for a chain that goes down to this area. So over here on the northwest side of this open zone, right here inside the mountain, you'll see this big chain coming down here. And you fly down to this point, and inside this little alcove, you will find Lothos Riftwalker. And you talk to him. The fabric of which our world is woven, or, or woven, is most delicate. It merely takes some knowledge and the application of said knowledge to tear the fabric. It is thusly that rifts are born. And you get the option to teleport yourself to the Molten Core. And he will teleport you directly into the Molten Core. The other way to get there would be to go into Black Rock Depths and run past Shadow Forge City and you're making your way to the Lyceum and you turn to the right and you go across the path and there's these big huge Fire Lords and you can walk into the Molten Core. Because if we turn around and look at this raid portal, that out there is the, the Firewalker span that leads to Shadow Forge City inside Black Rock Death. So there's two ways to get into Molten Core. Talking to Lothos Riftwalker is the easiest way. Now, if we look at the map of Molten Core, there's a number of bosses. There's Gehennis and Gar, and over here we have Lucifron and Magmadar and Baron Geddon and Shazaz and Sulphur and Harbringer and Golmag the Incinerator and Major Dormo Executus, and then we get to kill Ragnaros. There are a lot of bosses in Molten Core. Now, the class items actually drop. It's not tokens, they're actual class items. Like if I was to get the Lawbringer set, it would actually drop like the Lawbringer gloves or the Lawbringer leg plates. It wouldn't drop like the token of, of whatever Conqueror. It would actually be the Lawbringer set. Now look look at the Fire Lords. Then when they drop, they're like, they shimmer a little bit and there's little boggles come off of them. But everything looks so much better in here. Now, there are legacy loot rules that are enabled, which allow us to get all the loot from the bosses. But look how good these, these Fire Lords look now. They're burning, the fire effects are different. It looks really cool, right? And when they die, they shimmer a little bit and they disappear. Look at that, it's so cool. Now, here's the rub. The bracers and the belt for each set. So we come up here to Atlas loot. 
if you come down here to trash mobs, you will see the Cenarian Belt, the Night Slayer Belt, the Fellheart Belt, the Girdle of Prophecy, which is what the preset is called. All the belts and all the bracers drop from the trash mob. So if you want to get the belt for appearances, because while most times you cannot see bracers due to gloves, you can always see belts. The belts are always available. Granted, you can hide the belt if you don't want to see belts, but if you want the belt for your set, you need to kill all the trash mobs. Now, granted, not all the trash is going to have loot for you. Most of the time, it won't have anything. Or if it does have loot, it's going to be like lifeless stones or uh, burning pitch or wicked claws or stuff like that. But you'll want to do a full clear of Molten Core if you want to get your full tier set for tier 1 because the, the trash mobs have... It's right around a 2% chance to drop the belt and the bracers of the class sets in addition to like the lifeless stones, the burning pitch, the vile claws. See, look, I just got the Fellheart belt for the warlocks from killing this trash mob. So there you have it. If I was on my warlock, I'd be able to add the Fellheart belt to my appearance collection. But we're just going to come over here to this first section right here and go into this tunnel and you can make your way to Lucifron. Now there are some lava surgers that run around. There's also some um, flame imps that are in here. You can kill all of them and and just loot them all at once. But I mean, even, even the earth elementals and their new appearances look absolutely fantastic. Okay, this is the Magma Dark Chamber and there is our first boss, Lucifron. Now, as a general rule of thumb, if you want to solo Legacy Raids, you need to be at least, as a general rule of thumb, you need to be at least two full expansions away from the raids you want to solo. So if you want to be able to solo classic vanilla raids like Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, Encourage, and so forth, you need to be at endgame for Wrath of the Lich King because that is two expansions beyond vanilla slash classic WoW. That's a general rule of thumb. If you need to be three expansions beyond for some classes like Warlocks and Priests, then by all means be three expansions beyond. But as a general rule of thumb, in order to solo the hardest content in the expansion, you need to be two expansion packs beyond the expansion you want to solo. Okay, so from Lucifron, we got a whole bunch of gold, four gold, wow. We got the Arcanist boots, we got a heavy dark iron ring, we got some essence of fire, elemental fire, there's heart of fire, all sorts of stuff. Now these dogs, if you kill a pack of dogs and then drag another pack of dogs over to the pack you just killed, they will reignite each other and bring their fellows back to life. So what you want to do is once you kill a dog, it's always best to wait for them to despawn because if I kill these dogs, there's a chance... See, look, the Corehound reignites from the flame of another Corehound and all these Corehounds I killed previously, they're all back to life. So the best, the best rule to follow is to wait until the dogs despawn before getting the next group. Also, Inside the Molten Core, you'll notice if you're a miner, these Dark Iron Deposits. And if you wanted to make, like, the Dark Iron Weapons or the Dark Iron Armor, if you're a blacksmith, you need to come in here and mine the Dark Iron Ore. The only place you can get Dark Iron Ore is in the dungeons of Blackrock Mountain, like Blackrock Depths or Lower and Upper Blackrock Spire. Mostly Lower Blackrock Spire, though and Molten Core. It's the only place Dark Iron Ore exists. Also, if you're going to be mining the black, like mining the black rock and then forging it into weapons and armor, you have to use the Black Anvil, which is inside Shadowforge City at Lord Incendiarius, Lord, Lord Incinderus in Black Rock Depths. Okay, we killed Magmadar, and we get two gold, we get a couple of talismans of ephemeral power, we get the Blazing Rune, so you can actually get pets. This teaches you how to summon the Core Fire Imp. Three of the tablet talisman of ephemeral power yeah and then the pet so we learn how to, to summon a core fire imp you can also sell those on the auction house and some boss pets 
sell for quite a lot. So now that we've cleared out the Magmadar chamber, make your way to the south part of the, of the map and you will be able to enter this tunnel again. And in this tunnel, we want to take care of the dark iron ore that's around. But look how good, look how good that lava surger looks. But look, he, he just looks more realistic, more rock-like. He looks so cool. And then we'll just one-shot everything. And we need to kill all these flame imps because there's dark iron deposits up here. And if you go through the raid and kill Major Dormo Executus, all the dark iron deposits that you've passed up to that point will just disappear. So make sure you, you mine all the dark iron deposits you can on your first run through Molten Core on your way to all the bosses. That way you can start collecting all the dark iron deposits and it takes eight dark iron for one dark iron bar and the only place where you can smelt dark iron is at the black forge which is also inside black rock depths but it's at the loose it's at the, the the span that's right outside molten core and and you turn to the left instead of going straight down the span you turn to the left and you go down a little ramp and you reach the Black Forge. That's the only place where you can smelt dark iron ore into dark iron bars. When we do the dungeons of Azeroth, I will show you those locations. Then we have to go across that bridge to get that other dark iron deposit. And everyone who's in your group, like if you want to bring a couple friends with you, or if like you're a freshly minted level 60 and you have your friend run you through here for your tier 1 set, like if you want to twink at level 60, everyone in your party will be able to mine all the deposits that pop up. So now that we've killed Lucifron and Magmadar, come back out this little tunnel and turn to the left and start making your way down to Genis. So you want to come down this hill, and again, if you're looking for the tier 1 sets, be sure to kill all the trash mobs. Also, if you are a skinner and a leather worker, you can kill all the dogs and you can harvest core leather from them. And for some of the leatherworking sets, or I should say the leatherworking plans that you find in like Black Rock Depths or in Upper or Lower Black Rock Spire, they're going to require a bunch of core leather. You get them from the core hounds here inside Molten Core. There's even some Core Hounds inside Black Rock Depths, but you, you kill them and then skin them for the Core Leather you need. Well, here's Genis and his two little attendants. What does he want to give us? He wants to give us some gold. Oh, whoops. Okay, so he gave us the Robe of Volatile Power and the Heavy Dark Iron Ring. Okay, so the Robe of Volatile Power looks like that. So it's not a set item, but it is a transmogrification item. Look, there's like little leaves and little stems and stuff. On the, on the rear of the robes. That looks kind of cool. So there's also some transmog robes in here. Seeing like these, these dogs didn't give me any loot. So when you kill the trash and molten core, most of the time they won't give you loot because there's really not much loot to give them. So deep rock salt, lifeless stone, it's just, just boring stuff. And look, there's a dark iron deposit right here, and there's one right over there, too, we need to get. So the one right over there, we'll get that when we go down the tunnel towards Ragnaros. We're making our way now into the guard chamber, and you hear the music changed. And you'll see Gar, big earth elemental Gar over there with his little Earth Elemental attendants. Now, Gar and Baron Geddon have a very small chance, it's like less than 1%, a very small chance of dropping the Bindings of the Windseeker. And the Bindings of the Windseeker eventually lead to Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. And the Thunder Fury looks like that. One day, I'm gonna show you the quest line when you get both Bindings of the Windseeker. 
That is in a future video. Let's see what loot we get from Gar today. We get some gold, we get the Circlet of Prophecies, we get the Priest Helmet, we get the Rogue Helmet, which is the Night Slayer cover, we get a ring, and then of course we get Lava Core, Deep Rock Salt, Core of Earth, Essence of Earth, but no binding. Like I said, the binding is less than 1%. So now that we've killed Gar, you want to turn to the right and come through this little tunnel right here and go after Baron Geddon. And, and you've also noticed that aside from the snakes, like the Naga, all the bosses look like enlarged versions of all the trash. Oh, there's also Blackrock down there. Or I should say Dark Iron Ore. Right down here in the corner. Very cool. Also, the Blood of the Mountain that I just got, that you get from the big um, Molten Destroyers, you'll need that to forge some of the Black Rock armor and weapons. Or I should say some of the Dark Iron armor and weapons. But yeah, Gar was just a big Earth Elemental. Magmadar was just a big core hound. And then there's like five snake bosses and one boss for each type of the trash mobs that are in here. So Baron Geddon is the giant fire elemental. And he patrols up the ramp, down the ramp, in this cavern right here. And you see, there he is. He's coming down the ramp and he comes into the cavern, does once around, and goes back up the ramp. Like I said, Gar and Baron Geddon have a less than 1% chance of dropping the bindings of the Windseeker. There's a left binding and a right binding, and you have to have both of them to start the quest line for the Thunder Fury. Look. Oh, he wanted to give us the Sabatons of the Flamewalker and the Deep Earth Spalders. So these shoulders look like that. Kind of interesting shoulders. And then we also got the Sabatons of the Flamewalker, which let's zoom in here. They look like this. Those are male boots. Yeah, male. We got male boots, male shoulders. And then our next boss, which is, um, I guess, Shazra. Ah, there's my camera freaking out again. Not good. Shazra is right here. And from Shazra, we get the Salamander Scale Pants. We get the Arcanist Gloves for the, for the mages. We also get Essence of Fire, Heart of Fire, Elemental Fire, and a Dark Iron Ore Deposit over here. On average, and this is just an average, you might get more, you might get less. On average, you get between one and three class belts or bracers if you do a full clear of the raid. Most of the time, it's just one. Sometimes you get two, but at the max I've ever seen, and I've run Molten Core quite a lot because I have my tier one set, it'll, you'll get between one and three either belts or class bracers, but that's if you do a full clear. So we've killed Baron Geddon. We're now, we also killed Shazra. We're now going up this ramp. And right up here at the top of the ramp, oh, let's not, let's not fall off the edge. Right up here at the top of the ramp, you will find Baron Geddon's rune, okay? And you have to have all the runes destroyed before you can access Ragnaros. You can actually jump down right here and get Golmag the Incinerator. What does he want to give us? He wants to give us the Obsidian Edged Blades. So he gives us a big two-handed sword. Looks like that. He gave me my Lawbringer chest piece, so that's cool. We got a Fire Runed... Yeah, Fire Runed Grimoire, as well as some Fire and Earth Elements and a Lava Core. And then there's a Dark Iron Ore Deposit right over here in the corner. So if you jump down from this this walkway up here to the Gold Mag, the incinerator chamber, you have to run up here to the end and turn to the right and make your way back to the rest of the raid.
And when you get back to this point right here, go down this ramp, turn to the right and go down the ramp, and go and kill the last snake boss before Major Dormo Executus. And make sure you pick up all the dark iron ore deposits before you kill Major Dormo, because once you kill Major Dormo, all the ones up to this point will be said and done. You won't be able to mine them anymore. They'll just disappear. So yeah, Sulfur and Harbinger. He also has a chance of dropping a pet. And you see the rune in front of him? It's all glowy and fire-like. When you kill the boss, his rune disappears. Okay, what does he want to give us? He wants to give us the Mana Storm leggings, which are just cloth legs. Which, let me close this out. They look like that. Blue cloth legs. And the Flamewalker leg plates. These are plate that look like that. Interesting, right? And then, of course, we get Essence of Fire and some other fire elements. No pet, though. That's a shame. But then there's also two Dark Iron Deposits after we kill Sulfur and Harbinger. Ah, stuck on a vent. Ah. Okay, now that we have killed Sulfur and Harbinger, make your way back up this ramp, and then you have to do a 180 and come up to Major Dormo Executus. Let's get this Dark Iron Deposit. It's supposed to be right around here somewhere. Unless you have to come down here. Oh, yep, there it is. It's over there. Now, you'll notice that it's being really generous. We've only mined a few of them. We've already gotten 46, because we're getting between 3 and 5 each time we mine the Dark Iron Deposits. Okay, let's make our way up this ramp. And then at the top here, you see where that lava surge went down the down the ramp over there? That's how you get to Golmag the Incinerator the normal way. Oh, and there's my camera being wacky again. It's too far away. Okay, and then you'll notice that there is a dark iron deposit right over there. We'll get that after we kill Major Dormo. No reason to jump down and then not be able to get back up, so you have to go back up the ramp all over again. There's no reason to backtrack. We'll just get it on our way down. All right, there he is. Now, be careful. This middle section right here, that will damage you. It's like standing in the fire. Don't stand in the fire. Let's gather up all those little minions and blast them. So elemental fire, morning glory dew, and just garbage. I submit. I submit. Rashly, you have come to rest in secrets of the living plane. You will soon regret the recklessness of your quest. I go now to summon the lord whose house this is. Should you seek an audience with him, your paltry lives will surely be forfeit. Nevertheless. Seek out his lair if you dare. Okay. Now, loot from the chest. We get the core forged greaves, plate boots. These plate boots, let me, can I move this preview? Yes, I can. The plate boots look like that. 
the wild grow spalders. Let me move this down and zoom in. We just got leather shoulders that look like that. Kind of cool. Go away. Kind of cool. So we got leather shoulders and plate boots. So now that we've killed Major Dormo Executus, we can get the dark iron ore that's right over in this location right here. We need to make our way down past the Berengen room, down this tunnel into Gar's room, and then take this spirally path to Ragnaros. So here we go. And this dark iron deposit, the only way to get to it is to jump down from the ramp above it. Because as you can see, it's on, it's on a little island right here, and there's no way to jump back up there. But we can now get this dark iron deposit. And now we make the long march back to Ragnaros' chamber. Oh, see, we just got another another fell barrel, fell heart belt for the warlocks. It it looks like like that belt, right there. So we got two fell heart belts for the warlocks. I'm half tempted to just jump down from here. Let's do it. Oh, whoops! That was a mistake. That was a big mistake. Okay, let me. Oh. Let me correct that mistake, and I will meet up with you in just a moment. Okay, so we have... Yes, yeah, so we made the mistake of jumping down into Golmag's room again. Don't want to do that. We've made our way back up top, and we are continuing on the long trek back to Ragnaros' chamber. I mean, look how cool this place looks. With all the flowing lava, that this is all new. It didn't used to look this good the first time I was here and recorded the first video for you. This looks so much better now. And of course my camera is still kind of freaking out, but I mean look at this lava. It looks so much better. Okay, make your way to this tunnel. And when, once we go through this tunnel, we will be at Gar's chamber. And you can see that dark iron deposit is inside the hallway to Ragnaros, so it didn't disappear, but all the other ones did. Oh, we just got a band of the Hierophant ring. So if you're wanting to twink out, at level 60, then there's a ring for your, your ring saw. Okay, so once you get to these two molten giants, turn to the right. There's like a fire lord here too, guarding the entrance. Oh, there's a dark iron deposit over there we didn't get. Let's get that first. I'm out of range. Yeah, these dark iron deposits are on the way to Ragnaros, that's why they didn't just up and disappear. So yes, we are now at this point right here in the raid. We are ready to go down the spiral hallway towards Ragnaros. Now Ragnaros doesn't drop anything for tier one. He has some exclusive weapons he can drop, he has some exclusive transmog armor and stuff that he can drop, but he drops tier two pants. So if you're on the hunt for the tier 2 set, you have to come into Molten Core and kill Ragnaros because he has the tier 2 pants. You can see Major Dormo Executus right over there. And of course, there's lava destroyers or lava surgers wandering around the area, and they give lava cores and fiery cores and all sorts of stuff. But you're going to need lava cores, you're going to need fiery cores 
to actually make some of the dark iron armor and weapons. Now, this is the first point right here on the north side of the spiral spiral area where you can actually jump down into the lava and make your way to the center area and you can actually jump onto the center thing. Just be careful because this lava hurts. Or if you want, you could walk all the way around, all the way over there, come onto here, and then be right here. We just like to take a shortcut. Now, if you remember, Major Dormo and Ragnaros used to be voiced by Chris Metzen, but they have since changed the voices when they updated Molten Core because Chris Metzen no longer works at Blizzard Entertainment. Oh, hang on. Let's read what he has to say. The Fire Lord and his brethren once held sway over this entire world, mortal. As a servant of the old gods, he fought against the Titans for domination of this planet. The victorious Titans banished my master and his brethren to the elemental plane, there to remain imprisoned until the end of time. Tell me more. A mere 300 years ago, a reckless dwarf named Therisian summoned the master from his fiery realm. His return to this paltry world devastated the surrounding lands and created this volcanic core. Mighty Ragnaros has slept under this mountain ever since. What else do you have to say? We, his sworn servants, do his bidding and enforce his iron rule. Cut off from the energies of his fiery realm, Ragnaros is but a shadow of his true self. However, he has more than enough strength to be your end. Well, you challenged us, and we have come. Where is the master you speak of? And Ragnaros is massive. Let me zoom out all the way. And I have dynamic cam that allows me to zoom out all the way to here, and I can look just like a little ant compared to Major Dormo. Well, there he is. He's a big, tall monster. Yep, we just killed him. And you get to loot his hammer. What does he want to give us? He wants to give us some gold, choker of the Fire Lord, Nemesis, Warlock Pants. These are the Tier 2 Warlock Pants. They look like this. Nemesis lazing, Leggings. Tier 2 set. Judgment Leggings for the Paladin look like this. But they're the Tier 2 Legs. And we got two of the Judgment. And we also got the Dragonstalker Leg Plates, which are gold and purple, which look really cool. The Tier 2 Hunter set looks really cool. We also got the Eye of Sulphuros. Binds when picked up. The Eye of Sulphuros can be combined with the Sulphuron Hammer to create Sulphuros Legendary Hammer of Ragnaros. Interesting, right? We also got the Medallion of Grand Marshal Morris. Stamina Dot. That's a good tanking trinket. We also got the Claw Serenity Belt, which looks like this. You can see it either on the big window over here on the left right there, or you can see it in this smaller window right here. I can just zoom in and spin him around. You can see that's the Serenity Belt. Cloth Belt binds when equipped, so I could actually give that to my Warlock, learn the belt, and then disenchant it, which is really cool. But there you have it. That is Molten Core from the beginning to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up, rate me a like, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you always know when new content comes out. Also, please tell your friends about us so they can come and they can enjoy these videos and enjoy the adventures just as much as you do. Finally, and most importantly of all, 
please remember this. World of Warcraft is just a game. And games are meant to be fun, and you're supposed to have fun while playing them. So if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Meet me back here next time when we venture into the heart of Nefarian's Lair, and we visit Blackrock Lair, or I should say Blackwing Lair, and we go after our Tier 2 appearances. I'll show you all the Tier 2 sets, and that way you'll know where to go to get those appearances for your collection so you can also look really cool with transmogrification. I look forward to bringing you that adventure, and I hope you'll join me next time for Blackwing Lair. But until then, I'm Z, signing off. <laughs>